I was one of the 12 founder members of the Irish Women's Liberation Movement. And the first item in our agenda was to legalise contraception in Ireland, which at that time was forbidden. And if you were caught in possession of them, you faced a jail sentence or a large fine, not to mention social uh, disgrace. We were all Catholics. Church and state worked hand in glove. A Catholic state for a Catholic people. Marriage was a license for sex, really. And if you had sex, you had babies. You then entered into the nightmare of unremitting pregnancy. Now, in 1971, the average family size was 12, and not unusual to have 13 or 15 children. Northern Ireland was under British rule, slightly more liberal. But we thought, right, we'll get the train to Belfast, break the law, get the contraceptives, bring them back to Dublin. And the contraceptive train, some people get it wrong and call it the condom train. And I say, no, it was never a condom train. We were never going to give control of our sexuality and fertility to men. If we called it the condom train, you're drawing attention to the penis. Therefore, you're drawing attention to sex. In fact, we just weren't going to talk about it. There were 40 of us. We got out of the train station in Belfast. And to the camera shops we go, followed by the world's media. <laughs> and we go up to the counter. And I'm the leader of the pack. And I said to the chemist, uh, I would like, please, uh, the contraceptive pill. And he said, where's your prescription? I said, what prescription? He said, a doctor's prescription. I said, eh, I don't have one. He said, you can't have any. I said, well then, give me the coil. He said, where's your prescription? And then I had the idea, look, the customs officers, they have never seen the contraceptive pill. Nobody in Ireland has seen it. And we ordered something like a thousand aspirin. And we stripped them out of their packets. Here's the contraceptive pill. And we get back on the train. The train of we get to Dublin and the customs men are standing there at tables. I delegated Maureen Johnson. She's a kind of woman. I would follow her into bath. I've got that as well, and I'm not giving it to you. It's jelly. You're not getting it. You mind putting, putting up your bag? No, you're not getting it. Whereupon the rest of us then lined up, and they didn't lift a hand to stop us. And with that, suddenly, we hear the shouting. <laughs> People agreed with us, and that was massive because we were against the church and they were no longer afraid. You just knew you were touching a popular nerve, not in a bad way. It resonated with women who thought, I needn't get pregnant. She's got it. But that day when they sang, their voice bounced off the rafters. What they were shouting was, let them go, let them go. And there was joy. I'm not sure I've ever had an experience as joyful as that in my whole life. Mm -hmm.